Hello, Weezer Second Ward family. It's nice to be with you again today. Um, just wanted to do another little training video um, as we approach and get closer to General Conference. We know that we're going to be having a wonderful discussion and experience with dealing with the First Vision since it has been 200 years since the that wonderful event happened to the Prophet Joseph Smith. And so um, just a couple of things. Thank you for everything that you are doing to look after and minister to those in need. I appreciate hearing what you're doing, and I really do thank you and appreciate all that you do. Please continue to minister um, from far away. We don't want to have any contact at this time. Also, with the sacrament, um, if you didn't get the email that I sent out recently, we have been instructed from our area presidency here in Idaho to follow what the governor has ordered us to do. And so that we are, we've been asked not to go and give the sacrament in anyone's homes. Um, and so we'd like to respect that at this time. All right. So I have a couple of questions to start with, to ask you, I'd like you to please, as we go through this, I'm going to pause, or I would like you to pause the video at any time, ask questions, talk as a family, write down thoughts. Um, have a meaningful experience with this. And so I'm going to invite you to pause the video from time to time, but feel free to pause any time that you feel like you'd like to. All right, so let me get to the presentation here. First question, what is your current standing before God today? Are you good to die today? Second question, if you were to die today, what cons what would concern you the most? Now feel free to pause and talk about this or think about it or ponder it. These are very meaningful questions and can help us understand our standing before the Lord and also to help us understand what we need to do next in life. Um, so today we're going to be discussing Joseph Smith's first visitation. I know we call it the first vision a lot, but Joseph Smith rarely called it that. In fact, he called it his first visitation. We know that he had many visitations, but uh, that, that's what we're going to focus on today. And I'd like to show a couple of slides of President Nelson. Last conference, he gave us some very specific invitations to prepare for this general conference. And I feel like this coronavirus experience has kind of distracted many people from preparing for this, this wonderful event that is about to happen. And so I'm going to show these two slides, pause on the first one, and then I'll go to the second one and pause on that one and read it and talk about it if you want to. Here's the first one. And here is the second slide. It's pretty exciting to think that this next conference in a week will not only be memorable, but it will also be unforgettable. And so think about some of those challenges and invitations the prophet gave us to do. And I would encourage you, if you have not done them, to spend some time this week to do those things. Now, in preparation for this, I thought it would be fun to go over the nine accounts of the first vision. Joseph Smith gave four firsthand accounts. There are four accounts we have where he either wrote down the words or had one of his scribes as he dictated what happened to him, write down the words. And so we call those four accounts the main accounts. But there are five other accounts of, from people's journals who wrote down what he said in a meeting or somewhere else where he was telling the experience. And so as we look at these nine accounts, they give us the full picture of what happened in the sacred grove 200 years ago at this time. It's pretty exciting. Now, in order to make this uh, make sense, I broke this up into three different categories. So we'll look at first what, what it was like for Joseph Smith between the ages 12 and 14, what was going on 
What did he experience during that time leading up to the first vision? And then we'll look at the vision itself, what happened during the vision. And then we'll look at just a little bit of aftermath, not, not too much. The main bulk of this presentation will be dealing with the vision. Now, that being said, I use a program called Screencast-O-Matic to do this. And they only give you 15 minutes for free. So this may be two or three videos. I don't know how long it's going to be. But uh, I will put all the links there for you to click on and go through. And feel free to just do you know a little bit each day. Don't feel like you have to do it all at once. But this might be good stuff to prepare for this coming general conference. All right, so let's go to age 12. What was going on in Joseph Smith's life at that time? Now, the reason I started this with these two questions, or I guess three questions, is because these are the questions that Joseph Smith was concerned about at age 12. Um, this is what was on his mind. This is where he was spiritually. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show some things here. So here is, you'll notice at the bottom here, I'm going to give the different accounts. I'm going to cite them. So this is the 1832 account. And so go ahead and read this and notice how he was feeling. Imagine, age 12 years old, he is concerned about the welfare of his immortal soul. This is a spirit, a deep spirit. This is a noble and great intelligence spirit from the pre-earth life that has come to earth. This is someone who is very much concerned about very important things. And so I just want you to understand how remarkable Joseph Smith was at a very early age. He truly is a great spirit um, that was reserved and preserved and foreordained for this latter day time to be the restorer prophet. Uh, most 12 year olds that I know are not concerned about their immortal souls and where they are, their standing is with God. Most of them are concerned about playing sports or hitting their siblings or running around or food or things of that nature. So pretty awesome stuff. Here's, here's some more information. Please pause the video. Oh, maybe before. So Joseph Smith's quest for truth began at age 12. A lot of times people think that he had um, this idea that when he was 14 years old, he was wondering which church to join. Um, that is false. He started the journey at age 12, and the first question was, I'm a sinner, and am I okay with God? Am I okay with my standing? And so you'll notice this will be about a two-year journey to learn truth. That's a very important side note to this whole story. All right, so feel free to pause and read. All right, In interesting here that he is looking at his sins. He is asking the all-important questions we all must ask at some point in our existence. We have to ask these questions. We have to know what our standing is before God. I would recommend asking these questions as soon as you can and getting answers to the questions. Because if you wait till the final judgment, it may be too late. And so I love, I love how he's asking the most important questions. He goes on to say, One other interesting thing about Joseph Smith that we learn from these different accounts is that he would look up at the night sky when he was this age. And he wanted to, he really saw some cool things. And so he saw order and symmetry in God's creations. But the interesting thing about it was that he saw disorder and chaos on earth and in his own soul with his sins that he was dealing with. And so he saw order, he saw God's creations as this beautiful order but chaos all around him. And he was wondering how could God be the author of both things? All these other religions fighting over converts and having pretend feelings. And he was wondering how could God be responsible for that? And so you can see how in tune this noble soul of his was 
very fascinating. Feel free to pause this video and read this. We know that each member of his family was participating in some different belief system or a church. They were all very deeply religious, but they all had different feelings towards religion. For example, his father was a universalist, and so he had different ideas about religion and was brought up with that in his family. His mom, on the other hand, was deeply spiritual. She prayed and committed herself to God and had basically a 20-year journey to find truth. And so Joseph Smith is being raised in a very pious and religious home. And so I think that's a very important thing to note, the background that he was being raised in. Now, he he had church, he, he attended churches. We know that he asked lots of questions. He talked to ministers. He was a serious participant of religion. He really wanted to know which one would bring him to the Savior of the world so he could be forgiven of his sins. Too often people think that Joseph Smith's only question was, which church do I join? As if he was trying to pick um, some type of a donut in a bakery or something. But really, his first and foremost question, which led all the direction from there, was, am I okay? Am I good? I have sins. How do I get forgiveness? How do I get right with God? How can I be with him? Am I, am I okay if I, if I died, basically? And so he goes on in the 1838 account. Go ahead and pause and read this. You can see what kind of a soul he is as you read through his feelings here. Now, this 1838 account is the main one that we have in the Pearl of Great Price that we are the most familiar with. Notice the... Here's one more slide. I love how Joseph Smith wanted to know what was to be done. He was someone who wanted to act. Now, these phrases that he was that he explains the feelings he was having really match our day today. You think about how often people contend using words. There's lots of strife and contest of opinions, a war of words. There's the tumult of opinions. There's a great division among the people today. Lots of people contending with each other. Feelings, people being pretend rather than real. Confusion, bad feelings. I mean, this is something that is so relevant to you and I. This makes sense to us. Now, it's good to note that the Bible, the role the Bible played in American history, um, this was the source for religions. This was God's word. This really was the book that contained every answer. This is where you would go to get your answers. And so when Joseph Smith decided to go to God's word for this, that was perfectly in line with how the people thought back then. Now, the interesting thing about that is they did not think that they could ask God. They thought it was found in God's word in the Bible. And so the answer that Joseph Smith will get from the Bible will be very, very different than what he was expecting because of the culture that he was raised in. In fact, we know that he went to the epistle of James. Now, something fun about this is that James, the author of the epistle of James, he was the half-brother of Jesus Christ. He was one of the siblings of, of Jesus. He was a son of Mary and Joseph. And, uh, and so I think it's very fascinating that he was the one that wrote this verse down. And some prophets have alluded to the fact that he wrote it specifically for Joseph Smith. Now, what a powerful, powerful verse. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Please pause it and talk about this question either with your family or write down some thoughts. All right, this will be the end of this first video. We'll do part two next.